in this lesson, we want to talk about angles in trigonometry. All right, so let's start off the lesson by talking about some basic definitions. We'll think about the concept of a line, a line segment, and a ray. So let's suppose that we have two distinct points, and here on the screen you'll see that you have a point A and also a point B. So those two distinct points can be used to determine a line. Okay, so you see we've drawn a line through them. We can also use those letters, the A and the B, to name the line if we want. So we could call this line A, B like this, or we could also put the A, B, and we could put a line on top like this. Now, I want you to notice that you have arrows at each end, okay, and that tells you that the line continues indefinitely in each direction. Now, similarly, you have something known as a line segment. With a line segment, it's just a piece of a line or a part of a line. So notice how you have an end point here with A and an end point here with B. So here it doesn't continue indefinitely in each direction. It's a finite or countable length from the point A to the point B. So this is your line segment, your line segment AB, okay? And you can also write it like this. You can put AB with a little line on top and you're not gonna have arrows there. It's another line segment that's put on top of AB, okay? Lastly, we're going to talk about the concept of a ray. So here you have one end point, okay, in this case it's going to be A, and it's going to extend through this point B indefinitely, okay? So we see this arrow here, it tells us that it starts at A and continues through B indefinitely. So this is going to be the ray, the ray AB, or you could write AB, and you can do this. All right, so now I want to talk about an angle. And basically an angle consists of two different rays with the same endpoint. So when we talk about the two rays, these are the sides of the angle and the common endpoint is the vertex of the angle. So if we look at our example here, we have a ray AC. So we have a ray AC. And then we have another ray, which is AB. So another ray, which is AB. So these are going to be the sides for my angle, okay? Additionally, A is the common endpoint, so that's my vertex. Now, if I'm naming the angle, then I can call it angle CAB. You can go in order like that. Or you could go the other way. You could say angle BAC, okay? Or you could just use the letter of the vertex. Now, we can write out angle each time, or you can use this special symbol. So you can use this symbol here, and I could say, okay, this is angle CAB, or it's angle BAC. Okay, notice how A, the vertex, is in the middle each time. And then also I can just use the letter of the vertex. So I can say this is angle A. All right, now associated with every angle is going to be its measure, which is generated by a rotation about the vertex. So the measure will be determined by rotating a ray starting at one side of the angle, which is called the initial side. So let me just highlight that. For in this case, it's the initial side is here. We'll talk more about the standard position later on in the course. For right now, our initial side is going to be right there. Okay, so that's the starting position, and then we rotate to the other position on the other side, which is known as the terminal side, which in this case is right here. So you can imagine that you started with two rays that are on top of each other. So this guy represents this guy in the end, and I know I'm not drawing that perfectly well, but basically you can think about starting here and then just rotating about the vertex to get here. So this is your initial side where the two are on top of each other, and then it rotates to the terminal side where you still have one ray here or one side, and then another ray up here. Now, when we rotate in a counterclockwise direction, so meaning I start here and I rotate this way, okay, that's how I'm measuring, well, what happens is I generate a positive angle, okay? Now, if I go the other way, if I go clockwise, I'm going to generate a negative angle. We'll talk more about this as we progress through the course. But basically, if I started this way and I went that way, okay, now I'm generating a negative angle. Now, you could imagine if I started here and I went this way around to generate the same terminal side, okay, well, now I would have a positive angle because I'm going counterclockwise for the rotation. Okay, so we'll talk more about this as we progress. All right. So when working with angles, we're often going to measure our angle using the degree. Okay, so this is a unit of measure for us. We'll also see radians here shortly. But for now, when we work with the degree, we assign 360 degrees to one complete rotation of a ray. 
So in other words, what we're saying here is that the terminal side of the angle will correspond exactly to the initial side when it makes this complete rotation. So you can see this image that we have here, and you can imagine that we started out with two rays that were on top of each other, okay? And then we rotated it completely around. So it's one complete rotation here. And we assign the value to that angle 360 degrees, okay? So that's one complete rotation. Now, of course, you're gonna have a lot of scenarios where you make more than one complete rotation or less than one complete rotation. So if, for example, you made one over 360, that amount of a complete rotation, well, we would just take this number in the numerator here, which is one, and we would say that we have one degree in this case, okay? We can also write this using our degree symbol, so we can say it's one degree like that. If you had, for example, five over 360, okay, that amount of a complete rotation, this would be now five degrees, Okay, that would be the measure of that angle. And you can, of course, still write it like this, five degrees. Now, when we work with angles, we're gonna have some terminology that we have to get used to. So the first guy I wanna talk about is an acute angle. Okay, so this is where the measure of the angle is greater than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. So you see you have this Greek letter here, theta. And in trigonometry, we often use these Greek letters to represent an unknown angle. So here, this is just some unknown angle. Again, theta here we'll say that theta is greater than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. So this is an acute angle. Now, we've all seen right angles in our algebra course, especially when you're talking about the Pythagorean formula. But a right angle, in case you don't know, you're going to denote this with this special symbol here, okay? And this is where your angle is exactly 90 degrees. Okay, so theta here we can say is exactly 90 degrees. So next we want to talk about something known as an obtuse angle. So this is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So here we can say that theta is greater than 90 degrees, okay, the right angle, but strictly less than 180 degrees, which we'll find out in a minute is a straight angle. So for the straight angle, what we're going to have is theta is going to be 180 degrees. And basically what you have here, you can imagine you start out with, again, two rays on top of each other, you make half half of a complete rotation, okay? So this guy ends up right here, okay? And you end up with what looks like a straight line, right? But basically you started with two rays on top of each other, you made half of a complete rotation, and now the two rays are facing away from each other, okay? And in terms of the complete rotation, we know the degree measures 360 degrees. This is half of a complete rotation. So half of 360 is 180. So that's why theta here is 180 degrees for your straight angle. All right, so let's wrap up the lesson and talk about complementary and supplementary angles. So we'll start with complementary angles. And basically when the sum of the measures of two positive angles is 90 degrees, the angles are known as complementary angles. So here's a typical example. You can see that the bigger angle here, if I started from here and I rotated here, this is a 90 degree angle. Again, this is given to us by this symbol right here, okay? But we have these two smaller angles and we wanna find out their measure. So you have one that's given by this guy right here, 15X plus 12 degrees, and another that's given by this guy right here, the 12X minus three degrees. So to find the measure of each angle here, we use the fact that, again, the complementary angles sum to 90 degrees. So I'm gonna take this measure here, which is 15X plus 12. I'm gonna leave the degrees off for now. Then plus this measure here, which is 12X minus three. I'm gonna set this sum equal to 90 for 90 degrees. So we're gonna solve this, and basically 15X plus 12X is 27X. Then 12 minus three would be nine, and this equals 90. So what I'm gonna do now is just subtract nine away from each side of the equation. And of course, this is going to cancel. We get 27X is equal to 81. Divide both sides by 27, and you're gonna get that X is equal to three. So let me write that up here. We'll say that X is equal to three. So we're not done. We need to find the measure of each angle here. And X equals three just tells you what you need to plug in. Okay, so don't stop there. So we would have 15 times this three plus 12. Okay, so 15 times three is 45. 45 plus 12 is 57. So the measure here that you're looking for is 57 degrees, okay? Then the other guy is going to be 12X minus three. So 12 times three 
and then minus 3. 12 times 3 is 36. 36 minus 3 is 33. So the measure of this angle here is 33 degrees. And you can see that the measure of 57 degrees plus the measure of 33 degrees gives you a measure of 90 degrees, which again is the measure of the bigger angle. Okay, so now let's talk about supplementary angles. So we already know that a straight angle here, so if I started here and I rotated, again, this is a half of a rotation, this forms a straight angle, it's 180 degrees, okay? Half of 360 degrees, 180 degrees, that's how you remember your straight angle. So when the sum of the measures of two positive angles is 180 degrees, the angles are known as supplementary angles. So this example is basically the same in terms of how you set things up. You have this angle here that's 9x minus 5 degrees, so 9x minus 5. You have this angle over here, which is 5x plus 3 degrees. So I just put those two as a sum. So 9x minus 5 plus 5x plus 3. So I've got my sum going there. And I set it equal to 180 for 180 degrees. Again, that is the full angle, right? If I consider this all the way from here to here, it's 180 degrees. And so what we do here is we just solve. 9x plus 5x is going to be 14x. Negative 5 plus 3 is, of course, negative 2. So this equals 180. Let's go ahead and add 2 to both sides of the equation. We get 14x is equal to 182. We can divide both sides by 14 and find that x is equal to 13. So x is 13. Again, don't just put that in stop. You need to plug in to find out your measures, okay? So 9 times 13, 9 times 13 minus 5. 9 times 13 is 117, minus 5 is 112. So this guy is 112 degrees, okay? And then 5 times 13 is 65. Let me write that out. So 5 times 13 is 65, plus 3 is going to be 68, okay? So this would be 68 degrees. So again, if you look at the sum of 68 degrees and 112 degrees, you get your 180 degrees, which once again is the total measure of this angle, right? So if we think about the whole angle, including this smaller angle and the other smaller angle is 180 degrees. So we would expect that 68 degrees plus 112 degrees to sum to 180 degrees. And in fact, it does.